Okay, thank you all for coming. Um, the next talk is Universal Serial Bug, a tale of spontaneous modem research from Sebastian. Give a big round of applause, please. Uh, so hi, I'm Sebastian Krzyszkowiak, uh, I'm also known as DOS, and I have many hobbies, I make games for example, maybe you have played Animatch, for, uh, but uh, along other hobbies there is also Mobile GNU Linux, uh, which started many years ago when I got an open mock on Yofiana, and um, eventually I had been contracted by Poison to work on uh, the Libem 5 phone, which is this chunky boy here, and um, within this device there is a, a USB connected um, cellular modem on an M2 card, Buildmobi BM818, and this is the main character of uh, our talk today, uh, because we had a problem with it. And the problem manifested itself uh, in this way that sometimes, occasionally, seemingly at random, uh, the modem would just disappear from, from the bus. It would be just as if uh, it was unplugged from the socket and it would come back um, right away. Um, even though this, it did come back, it was still pretty disruptive uh, because net the network interface would go down, uh, the um, uh, audio routing would be turned down uh, if you were doing the call, so this uh, wasn't really great. The modem wasn't um, crashing, it wasn't rebooting, uh, because it, it maintained its state, at least some of its state, but uh, it was just like, as if you would pull the plug and uh, pull it, plug it back in uh, very quickly without, um, with some external power uh, connected to the, to the modem. And uh, there was also, the, um, there were also other instances where the modem wouldn't come back or when the whole USB bus would uh, actually die w together with it. However, we won't be talking about those. Uh, those turned out, even though they were, um, they were like worse, uh, they uh, turned out to be um, connected but separate issues that weren't as technically interesting as, as the, those resets turned out to be. Um, so this talk will be uh, some kind of debugging case study and um, I would just like to, to, to talk about how we um, identified the issue, how we uh, debugged it and work on, worked around in the end. And uh, at the start I would like to note that this is not some groundbreaking research, this is not an uh, a new discovery because uh, it turns out that this was known for ages already, but uh, I think uh, it's not a, a common knowledge uh, still, uh, it's, and it turns out that it can still bite. So uh, I thought that this would be interesting thing to talk about and to, to share. And so, in order to, to understand what's going on, I'll click, quickly go through the um, topology of the devices on the Librem 5. So we have two uh, M2 uh, slots inside. One of them is the cellular modem and the second one is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And there are two USB controllers. One of them goes uh, to the USB-C port um, and it roll swaps. And the other one uh, is connected to the internal USB hub and therefore this, uh, it works as host only. And the internal hub is USB 2642, uh, which uh, has three uh, downstream ports. One of them is internal as this hub has a micro SD reader built in. And the other one, the one that we will be inter uh, interested uh, in uh, today is the modem's M uh, port that goes to its M2 slot. And there's also the third port that goes to the Wi-Fi uh, M2 slot. However, none of the cards that we use uh, on, on this phone actually use USB. Uh, they, they use uh, different interfaces, so this third port effectively remains unused. Uh, so, universal serial bus. I'm just going to assume that everyone here knows what USB is. Uh, we all used it, so I won't uh, read Wikipedia definitions. I will, however, um, 
uh, go through some of the properties of USB, uh, either to remind you or to, to make you aware of how this works um, on the wire. So uh, the first thing, that the devices can be suspended. This is a power management thing. You can put a, a USB device to sleep. Uh, theoretically, all of them can be put to sleep. Not all of them react well to that. Uh, the specification says that they should, but yeah, the reality is different. And there are two ways in which you can uh, suspend a device. You can either selectively suspend a single port or uh, put the whole bus into so-called global suspend. And another thing is that no device on the bus speaks unsolicited. Every communication is actually uh, handled by the host. It's the host that keeps uh, polling each of the devices uh, for whether it has something to say or not, and uh, then the device only responds to, uh, to what the host is asking it for. There is one exception. Um, when a device is suspended, um, it can actually signal that it wants to be woken up, but that's the only thing that it can signal um, on its own. Um, one interesting thing is that, I think not everyone is aware of that, that all USB hubs are technically smart. They are on their own a uh, US, proper USB device that you can talk to, that you can send comments, and that can uh, respond and send some state status. And um, the features that you can control this way uh, are v v vary. So um, not every hub will, for, uh, for instance, provide uh, power switching control. However, this is exactly how uh, Suspend is implemented. You send a, a message to the hub, and the hub interprets it and does it. And um, internally, when it's on the wire, a USB works on with two wires uh, that form a differential pair. Um, and you can have, uh, on two wires, you can have four states. However, uh, one of them is um, illegal in the specification. The USB doesn't use it, so we are down to three states. Uh, they are called J, K. Uh, those two are when one of the wires is high and the other is low. And there is SE0, uh, which is when both of the wires are low. And um, there are some differences between various speed modes, uh, between USB 1 and USB 2. We won't be going into newer versions as they are different. Uh, and, with, um, and the modem here uses USB 2. Um, however, uh, between, uh, the differences between USB 1 and 2 are uh, small. The, the old states are similar. They use different voltages. Um, but logically, it's basically the same thing. So let's go back to the bug. Um, uh, at some point, we have noticed that those modern resets are somewhat dependent on the movement or signal strength. Um, the easy way to, to trigger them was, for instance, to ride a train. Uh, you could uh, often see the, the, the cellular connection icon just disappearing for a moment, uh, or when you downloaded some file, it may, maybe uh, could, uh, could drop out. And that was, uh, that was pretty annoying. And, um, and um, also, it sometimes in some places, it basically never happened, like at my desk when I worked on it. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and um, it quite often happened f uh, in my bedroom, for example, where overnight I would wake up to a bunch of resets um, happening um, overnight. <laughs> So in order to, to look at those issues, uh, we have to, to check some logs. I, I have showed the DMESC earlier, but that's, uh, well, not enough. And uh, Linux has this um, pretty useful feature called dynamic debug. Uh, and um, pretty much all the kernel uh, code drivers uh, are sprinkled with uh, debug print messages. However, they are by default compiled out for performance reasons. However, you don't uh, need to recompile the kernel to put them back in. Uh, they can be dynamically uh, patched in, and this is how you can do it. 
using this interface, uh, this invocation tells the kernel to re-enable all the print statements from C files, uh, from drivers USB core directory in the kernel source tree. So we did that. And uh, this told us a bit more. It turns out that the, mm, this is an example of uh, such reset happening. And uh, it turns out it happens when the device wants to wake itself up from, uh, from USB suspend. Um, and uh, here we can see um, the status um, given by the hub to, to its ports. The port one is the, the micro SD reader, and we can see that uh, there is 0507, which means that five that is connected and enumerated properly, uh, seven um, is uh, that it's suspended, and change zero means that nothing changes. Uh, and port two is the modem, and here we can see uh, that uh, it's different. Zero one means that it is connected. However, it's uh, not. Ac it didn't actually went through ha like the whole process of, of connecting. Uh, so something happened there. Uh, zero one means that it's not suspended. And change five uh, tells us that it both uh, changed its suspend st status and connection st status. So um, it's just like it would be pulled uh, from the plug. Um, and put quickly back in uh, at this point. And to, to compare it, this is an example of when things go right. Um, after the, the uh, port has been resumed, we can see that status is 0503, uh, which is different from the port 1 because port 1 is still suspended and port 2 is already woken up, so there's 3 at the end. And change 4 tells us that only the uh, suspend status has has changed. So this is how it looks when it works fine. Um, so that to told us something, but not much. There is uh, another feature called USB Mon, which uh, can be used to, to sniff on the traffic on the USB bus, uh, and can be used with such common tools like Wireshark. However, it still didn't tell us anything new. Um, uh, it's just like if the device was disconnected and pulled back in, so not, not very useful at this, at this level. Um, so we have to take a few steps back. And um, the first Lima 5 phones shipped to, to, to the first customers in December 2019. And uh, the issue uh, about those resets was filled actually by myself in August 2020. So uh, there was plenty of time uh, to notice this issue and it hasn't been noticed earlier. So uh, it's safe to assume that it uh, wasn't there uh, initially uh, and just uh, s just came, uh, came up later. Uh, so looking at uh, what was the state uh, that those first phones uh, has shipped in, uh, the USB power management was already e enabled um, with the software that was, um, that was running on them. However, it turned out that the SD card reader, uh, the driver for it, uh, kept the, the USB hub active all the time. It was basically pulling it uh, for media change um, status, and uh, that's why it never suspended. So the whole USB hub was kept active. And it was fixed in August 2020. And uh, there is there is a somewhat lengthy uh, can, uh, thread on the Linux kernel mailing list that you can follow if you're interested in that. And there was also another thing. As at some point, I have noticed that Modem Manager pulls, ev uh, pulls the modem for its signal strength every 30 seconds. And I wanted to change that because that's not very nice on the battery. And uh, to, to make it start listening to, to the messages coming from the modem whenever signal strength changes instead. Uh, and I got uh, it working the first time in the context of Libre 5 in August 2020. And uh, later I noticed that with this change, the reset popped up more often. Uh, without this change, they were still there um, w once the, the hub started suspending, but um, not as often as with this patch. So 
uh, now we know that this is related to power management, and um, it turns out that disabling uh, suspend made the issue go away. So yay! However, uh, doing so it's almost half a watt, so not not so yay. And um, basically, this uh, this was mm, the main reason behind a poor. Uh, reputation of battery life on those devices when they first shipped. So um, power management is essential and it must be kept on. We just have to, to find a way to, uh, to solve it without uh, disabling suspend. And um, there was uh, one vital observation. Um, I think Elias observed it first um, that uh, the issue only ever happens if the hub has just been suspended. Never if the hub uh, sleeps for some time already and then the modem wants to wake up. It's always uh, the hub goes into suspend and right away the modem it, it wants to, to wake itself up uh, and things go wrong. Uh, so this starts to smell like some kind of race condition. <laughs> Uh, so what we do with race conditions, we start playing with some timeouts, uh, if not to, uh, in hopes to fix it, then maybe to, to make it happen all the time, just to learn something about what's going on. And uh, Martin Keplinger was earlier working on the, that other issue that made the, uh, made the uh, modem not come back. Um, he had some progress on that, but however, he didn't really uh, make progress on, on this one. Uh, when I took it over, I started with, uh, based on, on his work and um, to figure out what's going on with the kernel code in USB and started changing some timeouts. Um, eventually, I figured out that this w isn't going to help because at this point where uh, was the earliest possible point where we could query the, the hub for its status, it was already uh, telling us that something wrong happened, so uh, the, this didn't really help. And um, a vital thing that really helped was finding out that you could reproduce it by pinging the phone. Um, if you pinged it over the network interface, cellular network interface, and set the packet interval just right, I think it was about slightly above two seconds, uh, you could actually make the modem uh, reset this way. Uh, so this helped tremendously to investigate it. Um, and at some point, I also started uh, playing with an USB M2 adapter to, to pull the uh, the modem from the phone and put it into other kinds of USB sockets uh, in other devices. Um, the idea was to identify whether it was the hub or the SOC or the modem itself that uh, caused troubles. And um, I found out that uh, with blacklisted kernel modules for the modem and uh, sleep timeouts all set to zero, I could make, make it into some kind of reset loop. It would basically reset every second or two uh, and keep resetting. And um, at some point I noticed that um, when it was plugged to some USB hubs, I gathered pretty much all the hubs I had in my, in my house, um, some pretty ancient ones as well, and with some of them, it, it never resetted. I couldn't make it reset with some of the hubs. With others, it was pretty easy. And whenever it was connected uh, to the host directly with no hub in between, it always uh, worked. It never reset. It, and it even uh, applied to this port on, on the Libem 5 itself. Uh, when it was plugged to the USB-C port, um, the resets were never there. Um, <laughs> so um, there was uh, the time to start to, to read uh, some specs to, to find out. Uh, what's going on, or should be going on. Uh, and it turns out that the USB device enters suspend state after three milliseconds of no activity seen on the bus. And um, this can happen in two ways. You can send a um, message to the hub uh, to, to enable port suspend feature, uh, and this is how the, the hub stops sending uh, frames to that port anymore so it doesn't see activity uh, and it suspends itself or you can uh, stop 
any communication on the on the bus, uh, which is called global suspend, and then all the devices uh, on that bus uh, see no activity and uh, go into suspend. And um, when the device detects that the, uh, the data lines have been um, in the idle state for at least three milliseconds, um, and high speed idle state is SE0, uh, it must revert to the uh, full speed configuration, uh, which is J. Uh, so uh, D plus uh, high, if I am correctly. Um, and uh, then it must sample the state of the line. Um, so it checks what hub has uh, or host has asserted, and it, if it's full speed J, then uh, it continues with the suspend proce process. It is required because SE0 uh, is also a reset signal. Um, if uh, at this point uh, it would stay in SE0, it means that this is the default state that the, the, the bus is put in and the device must reset. Um, but if it's J, then it means that uh, this is a suspend has been requested, uh, so the device then assets J itself and stays in J. And um, we now know how suspend works and how about resume. Um, the host can uh, resume the port at any time. It must send the resume signaling, which is K, for at least 20 milliseconds. Um, and after resuming the bus, the host must uh, resume communication within three milliseconds because otherwise the device would go into suspend again. Um, and what if it's the device that wants to wake itself up? Um, it cannot uh, wake itself up uh, after being uh, put into suspend for at least five milliseconds, and then uh, it can, uh, and it must hold uh, the resume signaling, which is still K, uh, for at least one millisecond, but for no more than 15 milliseconds. And the controlling hub, which is the hub that actually uh, actually handles the resume sus suspend, as there might be more on the mm, in the tree, uh, must uh, rebroadcast that uh, to uh, to upstream uh, within one milliseconds and ensures that it is signaled for at least 20 milliseconds. So it kind of takes over that uh, signaling. So uh, now it was time to get dirty. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have to do that myself. Um, Eric Kazmenko, who is the um, hardware guy at Purism, uh, did it uh, for me uh, and soldered some wires um, and put a probe, differential probe to it uh, in order to, to sniff what's going on, on the, electrically on the wires. Um, so this could be then seen on an oscilloscope and recorded. And this is an example of what's, what's going on. Uh, we can see here at the beginning some kind of high speed uh, communication as it's a lower voltage than, than full speed. At this point we can see that the, uh, the modem went into suspend. This is the J state uh, for some time. And then here we can see the K state. Uh, which means that uh, it was either um, resumed by host or it wanted to wake itself up. And it happened, cycled this way for, uh, for some time, uh, and eventually something went wrong here. So to zoom it up, um, what happened here is that there was some kind of uh, com high-speed communication. It stopped for three milliseconds. Uh, at which point the, the modem went into suspend uh, and there was a, a J signal for another three milliseconds. Um, then it uh, went into K state. Um, we can assume that the modem wanted to, to wake itself up and uh, it uh, lasted about 20 milliseconds, but then the bus went into SE0 and communication did not resume. It stayed at zero. Uh, at which point, after another three milliseconds, the modem just suspended itself uh, again. So um, this uh, is somewhat informative, but uh, still not enough. 
Um, my hypothesis at this point was that the specification requires a grace period of five milliseconds before sending a remote re wake-up request, but I wasn't quite sure uh, whether the wording um, is, isn't ambiguous uh, because it says that um, that it needs to stay continuously in the idle state for five milliseconds, but if we check here, we have two idle states. There is high speed idle state for three milliseconds and full speed idle state for another three milliseconds. So whether, when is this point where it starts? Um, however, there is also, uh, aside of English description, there is also um, a bit more formal state machine description in the specification, and after de deciphering that, it turns out that, um, that both uh, of these idle states actually counted as one continuous idle state, so uh, this probably wasn't it. Mm. So we go back to, to getting dirty, uh, and this time, instead of just, uh, just sniffing what's going on between the modem and the hub, we also uh, sniffed what's going on between the hub and the phone's uh, processor. At the same time, which required uh, quite interesting contraptions to be, to be made, uh, but uh, it worked, and we got some data. And, and he, this is an example of things going wrong, and we can see some USB microframes here, um, so host polling the devices, uh, and then some communication actual, and then um, nothing for three milliseconds on the modem, uh, modem port. Uh, on the bottom we can see the uh, port between hub and the uh, SOC. There the microframes continue, and the modem goes into suspend, and after, I think here it was two milliseconds. Uh, it wants to uh, to wake itself up, so it assets K, um, and uh, the hub takes over. Um, then 20 milliseconds later, it stops. But what happens here at the bottom? Uh, the the microframes continue uh, when the modem is suspended, and when it wakes itself up, starts to wake uh, itself up. The communication still happens until this point. Then it stops. This is the point where the hub has been suspended by the host. And then after three milliseconds, the hub went into suspend process by itself. And what happens here is that at this point, um, at this exact point, the hub started to wake itself up. However, um, at this point also, it should start, um, start sending frames uh, to the modem, start forwarding frames from the host to the modem, but uh, the hub itself was waking up, so there was no data to, to, to transmit, so uh, it, it all fell apart at this point. Um, and I, st I started looking uh, close, closely into the specification uh, and uh, following the state machine, and I couldn't really figure out what what the hub was exactly supposed to do in this case. Uh, when the upstream facing port uh, went into suspending state while a downstream, downstream facing port uh, was already in the resuming state. And um, I wasn't sure whether it was, uh, it was my misunderstanding or, or whatever. Um, what was, at this point in time, the host has no way to know that the downstream facing port is already attempting to wake itself up. Uh, if at here we would query the status of the port, it would say that it's still suspended. There was no indication, uh, and that's actually how it works in the spec. Uh, so uh, that information only remains, uh, only becomes available when the port already finishes uh, resuming. So uh, now I had some, I knew what was going on. Uh, and I uh, had the knowledge what to put into the, the search browser, and I found this email uh, from many years ago from Alan Stan, who is a guru of USB and power management subsystems in Linux, and uh, he stated that the USB 2 spec does not take into account that possibility. Uh, so uh, so uh, Alan basically validated, uh, validated my, uh, my suspicion um, years before, before I made that suspicion. Uh, so uh, at this point, I could safely assume that 
my suspicion was true. Um, and what's worse, that mail ended with, I don't know what we should do. Suggestions, anybody? <laughs> There were some replies, but it didn't really went anywhere. And however, that mail pointed to an irata. And irata said that uh, there is a very unlikely possibility of a race condition, and <laughs> this issue can be avoided if uh, system software suspends uh, a downstream facing hub ports before suspending a hub. I completely forgot to check iratas. At this point, this was the first time I, I seen it. And I was so happy that this was the first time I seen it because what the hell, this uh, recommendation, suspending the, the port uh, before suspending the hub is exactly what makes this issue happen. Uh, and Alan uh, Stan said uh, so uh, himself in his mail that this attack is completely bonkers. Uh, so I'm so glad I didn't see it because I would be so confused. So. And they were carried out. Uh, what I did to, 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 actually, uh, to actually stop, prevent it from happening. Uh, so um, I have added a, a port quirk in the uh, USB uh, subsystem in the kernel, uh, which uh, when it was enabled, uh, the port uh, was never actually suspended selectively. Uh, the Linux only pretended uh, to, to suspend it, but uh, didn't actually send the command to the hub. Um, since this would cause troubles as uh, if we just pretend uh, that the device is suspended, we stop polling it for, for more information, but the device isn't actually suspended, so it can't wake itself up. So to prevent uh, that from, uh, from happening, we keep uh, such quick port active whenever any sibling port is active as well. Uh, and um, when the, the hub uh, gets resumed, uh, all uh, ports marked with this quirk are also resumed as well. Uh, this lets us rely on global suspend when we just uh, stop, com uh, stop sending any communication and all the device devices uh, suspend at the same time, preventing this race condition from happening. Uh, and this works well with the topology on the Libm5, but breaks apart on different topologies. If we added another device, for example, on this uh, third port uh, that also wanted to use remote wake up, it wouldn't work. Um, that's the, the code. Um, so what, what can we do now? Uh, this um, hack isn't really uh, suitable for, for mainlining. It's really a bad hack. Um, so for now, it stays in our, in our uh, downstream tree. However, I believe there is a way that, uh, to do it uh, in a way that could be uh, potentially uh, upstreamed. Um, it wouldn't be the, the, the default, I'm pretty sure, because this, it would be quite inefficient, but I think it should be possible to have this as, uh, as an option in, uh, if you uh, have such devices that, uh, that, that reset in this way, that you could actually uh, have them work reliably uh, and don't, uh, wouldn't have to, to disable power management completely. And uh, to do so, we would have to ensure that no downstream wake-up capable port is suspended while the hub goes into suspend. And um, there is also another thing that made me implement it as, a, as this hack instead of, of a proper solution first is that while the proper solution is less efficient, this hack actually gives us some efficiency because we can uh, skip suspending each device one by one. We just suspend them all at once and it uh, takes less time. So uh, this lets us make the modem uh, go to sleep more often, saving more battery. And uh, so that's basically it. Uh, I'm available to, uh, for consulting so I can turn your money into code if you're interested uh, to, to have something done uh, in mobile Linux space. Uh, and if you have some questions like my reviewer had uh, here, uh, you can ask them now. Thank you. Great. Uh, we already have a question here. 
You mentioned uh, the influence of the model manager on this effect. Uh, can this be explained you, uh, with your findings? Yes. Um, this is because uh, when the model manager is polling every 30 seconds, uh, it's the host that initiates the communication. But w uh, if we switch to unsolicited uh, messages from the modem, then it's the modem that actually initiates it. So it wakes itself up uh, more uh, as opposed to the host waking itself up when this issue never happens. Hello. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, how many man hours went into this bug fix? Oh, I don't really know. It took many um, false starts, let's say, and red herrings. Uh, so this is obviously just a chunk of it because I had to feed it into the presentation. But uh, yeah, there were many approaches that when we were really in the dark at the beginning. I didn't know anything about how USB works. Initially, I had to learn it from scratch. So, so it took some time. Hi, a uh, quick question for you. Actually, two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, is the USB the ideal way to connect the modem? Or is there a better protocol that we could be using in the future and in another design? Um, it depends what you have available. Perhaps uh, on the Libyan 5, we could theoretically use PCI Express. However, uh, PCI Express would be, um, uh, at least on this SOC, would be much more power hungry than, than USB. And USB makes it easy to, to find such devices that you can actually have on a replaceable card that can, you can put into the phone um, pretty much off the shelf. So uh, the options are quite limited in this space. And second question actually on that, when it comes to adding a different modem, uh, this isn't a modem issue, obviously it didn't come down to which modem you were using, but are you guys still looking at releasing a Jamalto modem? Because that would be pretty cool. Um, I, I'm not really uh, <laughs> okay, a person that has anything to, uh, like any power in this regard, so I can't really say much about it. We have a question from the metrics channel. Uh, when will it be fixed upstream, hopefully? Hopefully soon. Uh, the, making this presentation, uh, s submitting it here uh, was actually a way to force myself into, into like going through this again because after getting this hack done, I just uh, like wanted to take a break from all this USB stuff. So, uh, so maybe soon, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, I think it, sh it should be pretty simple, in fact. Uh, the, um, we'll see uh, what the maintainers will say, whether they will be, uh, they will be um, uh, happy to take some uh, such a quick approach, or maybe they'll have another ideas. We'll see. Are there any proper solutions to this problem, like in the uh, USB specification, for example, or are there any hubs that don't have that issue? Or so um, the specification of USB 2 never fix it. USB 3 works in a completely different way, and there are also um, like um, supplemental low power modes in USB 2 that could be used and that do also don't have this features, but you have to have a device that supports those modes, and uh, we don't. Um, so we can say that it's fixed because it's all completely different in USB 3 and higher. And for USB 2 devices, it's all uh, up to, to the hub and how it's implemented. If it's implemented to, uh, to the word of the spec, uh, it, uh, it, there's a high probability that it uh, will have this issue. But some hubs um, are like, specs gives you some time to do, to do things. You can do it. Uh, like the minimum and maximum time, uh, and some hubs are faster, and then you you may not ha uh, see th this issue happening with them. So yeah, yeah. at this point, we, with USB 2 devices, it's probably up to uh, to your luck with uh, <laughs> with what components you are using. I'm working on uh, open source USB debugging tools, sniffers, software, so uh, I'd be interested in talking to you about capturing this as a test case to make sure that we're able to spot this happening on the wire in future. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Um, yeah. Uh, first, another from the chat, apparently, then I pass it to you. <laughs> 
is there uh, is there known other mobile devices that suffer this issue? I relate some aspects of the bug on Pine, Pinebook Pro Wi-Fi. Um, Honestly, I have no idea. This was the first time I um, I, I experienced this issue uh, and had to, to basically go through, through what I, I told you today. So I don't know. Uh, there were, well, this was known for, for years. Uh, the email was uh, 12 years ago, and Alan Stem has said that this uh, came up in testing, so obviously this, this came up somewhere. Uh, but where it was and which devices were affected, I have no idea. So you mentioned the other USB bug you were facing where the whole bus died. Uh, did you fix that as well? And can you say like two sentences about that? So once again? Uh, the other bug you mentioned in the beginning where the whole USB stack died and the modem didn't come back. Did you fix that as well? And can you say maybe two sentences about that? What's so basically that one was pretty boring. It uh, ended up to be a missing uh, quirk in the uh, host driver that was already implemented but wasn't enabled in the device tree. And uh, at some point, actually, uh, NXP has enabled that for all IMX8 um, boards. So this is fixed now in uh, May 9. So please give another round of applause. Thank you.